Well, it's, it's the same trend we've been seeing for a while now, really much, well, pretty much since the post-GFC. So it's a story of Sydney and Melbourne at one end of the spectrum. So Sydney values, the past financial year, they're up by a little bit more than 16%. Melbourne's up by a little bit more than 10%. Then you have a lot of white space between the next best performer, right? So then we have also markets going down. We've got uh, Darwin down 3% and Perth values are down by nearly 1%. Then in between, we've got uh, the fact that you know, Brisbane values are up by about 3.5%, Adelaide's up by about 4.5%, Hobart and Canberra are, are just coasting along at the moment, although they have seen a little bit of acceleration in their rate of growth the last six months. Well, when you look at where the growth is occurring, it's no coincidence that it's in the states that have the strongest economies, New South Wales and Victoria, and it's also the states that are showing the strongest rates of migration. They're somewhat sheltered from the downturn in the mining sector. So look at Sydney and Melbourne. We haven't seen a slowdown in overseas migration. We haven't seen a slowdown in interstate migration. In fact, both of those, those measures have actually increased while the mining states are showing a substantial decrease in the rate of population growth. So population growth, very positive for a housing market, of course, that's housing demand, but also the fact that we are seeing Sydney and Melbourne very much dominated by the services sector, particularly uh, finance, insurance, banking, uh, which are all very much vibrant, partly due to the very strong housing market. Well, rental yields have been on, on an ongoing downwards trajectory in every capital city apart from Hobart. Hobart's the only city bucking the trend where rents are rising a little bit faster than what dwelling values are. You look at the major cities, uh, Sydney and Melbourne is where yields are the lowest. So we have seen yields slip a little bit lower the last month. Uh, Melbourne yields are the lowest of any capital city down the low threes, gross, and Sydney's very, very close behind. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, we've still got Darwin as the best yielding city, but in fact Brisbane has just taken over as the highest yields for apartments, and Hobart is now becoming actually quite close to, to, to Darwin for the best gross rental yields for houses. And I think we might see a little bit of role reversal uh, between Darwin because we are seeing yields coming down uh, in Darwin while, while Hobart yields are starting to rise. Well, a bubble is simply a marketplace or an asset class that is growing at an unsustainable pace and where intrinsic values have detached from the actual values. So we're in a marketplace at the moment that is seeing unsustainable growth, absolutely, and we are seeing dwelling values rising at a substantially higher pace than what rental income. So when people talk about a bubble, we are seeing a few of those check boxes being ticked at the moment. There's a lot of economists that look at our housing market and, and would say that we're in a bubble because we have seen unsustainable rates of growth. We have seen very high debt levels as well. Um, and we are seeing uh, um, households, particularly investors, investing in a marketplace at a time when yields are, are fundamentally very low. So they're investing speculatively for future capital gains. Probably the, the one thing that I would disagree with is that we are going to see a substantial fall in dwelling values. And for that to happen, we need to see some sort of a trigger event. We need to see something that happened that, made, that, that would make homes start to default on their mortgages and start selling their properties en masse. And that would be something like um, unemployment rates spike higher quite sharply over a very short period. It would be something like um, an external shock. You know, the Greek crisis is happening in the background probably won't affect our markets too much, but that could evolve into something that could be uh, quite catastrophic globally if, if we saw that contagion spread. But at the moment, it doesn't seem to be that trigger event or that catalyst to cause some sort of a, a cataclysm, cataclysmic fall in dwelling values. What's more likely is what will happen back in, say, 2003 through to 2007 when Sydney values did correct. They corrected by about 8.5%, and they took about five years to stage a nominal recovery. After that recovery, they, they, they virtually flatlined for a little while and then started increasing quite quickly once again in 2009.